Hi, I'm Gary, the Traveling Yogi. Today we've come to Cook Park. Cook Park is in the southeastern part of the city of Denver, um, pretty much adjacent to uh, Cherry Creek. So this is where we'll be for our practice today. It's a beautiful fall morning, uh, pretty much in the middle of September. As a matter of fact, it's September 15th. And uh, so this will be the backdrop for our practice today. Find a seated position as we begin our practice, as we often do, by taking just a few moments to become present. Become present to our body, become present to our mat, and become present to our practice. So take a deep breath in, let your spine get longer as you breathe in. Let your eyes close down if you're comfortable doing that. Relax the shoulders a little bit. And just begin to become aware of the body, your body on your mat, and the beginning of your practice. Feel the breath as it flows in and out of the body. And let the breath become a little bit gentler if you like. Maybe letting the breath lengthen And one more breath. Now just let it all go. For our practice today, we're going to continue with what I've been doing for the last uh, few uh, practices. And that is a five-part practice that I've developed over the last six months or so consisting of just very gentle movement of the main joints in the body, then dynamic stretching, then strength building poses, and then static stretching, and then finally ending, of course, with Shavasana. So let's begin with our gentle movement. Cross-legged position, if you can, with the palms on the knees. Sit up nice and tall, so your spine lengthens, your chest rises, chin nice and level. <clears throat> now look off to your left. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, a little frog in my throat to the right and to the left. Try not to stretch very much. So if you get to the point where you feel the muscles stretching back off a little and to the right. And one more time to the left and then to the right and then back to center with the chin level. Lift the chin just slightly and then bring the chin down towards the chest. Do that twice more, lifting the chin. And we're just exploring mobility in the upper part of the cervical spine. Lift the chin a little bit, and then down, and then back to center. Now right ear towards right shoulder, chin to chest. We're going to roll the head around on the top of the shoulders, and then chin to chest, left ear to left shoulder, lift the chin and then right ear towards the right shoulder. One more time around this direction. And then bring it back to center, take a deep breath. And then go back the other way, lifting the chin and then left ear towards left shoulder. And around about three times this way. No reason to rush. And let it slow down. Just feeling the movement in the cervical spine. When you're ready, come back to center. Now take a very gentle twist to your right. Again, not to the point where you're stretching. And then back to the left. And we're just exploring movement in the rest of the spine, the thoracic and the lumbar spine. And back to the left. And one more time. To the right. And back to the left. And back to center. Now bring the right hand down and just bend the spine to the right. Just curving it a little bit and then right hand towards right knee. Left hand could come out, just a little bend. And same thing on the other side. We'll do that about three times. Just feeling through that very limited range of motion. Not very much bending. And then back to center. Bring the legs out in front. I'll move to the side so you can see this. 
and then bend the left knee, bring it into the chest and straighten and bend and straighten and bend and straighten and one more time. That may be four instead of three, straighten. Now bend the left knee, bring the left knee out to the left and then bring the knee forward and then into the chest. We're just making circles with the knees. Again, not too much, not to the point where you feel a stretch. After you've gone around about three times, go back the other way. Making circles with the knees. And all we're doing is ro moving that femur in the hip joint and then back to center. Now straighten the leg and circle the foot so you're little, bringing a little bit of movement into the ankle on that left side. And then bring the left foot down. And do the same thing on the other side. Bring the right knee in and then straighten and bring it in and straighten. And third time, I think I got it three times right this time. And then bend the right knee and bring it out to the right side and then bring the knee forward and then into the chest and off to the side. And that's the second time around. And the third time. Now go back the other way. Again, all we're doing now is moving the femur in that hip joint. And then straighten the leg. And then rotate the foot at the ankle. Go around a few times one way. And then back the other way a few times. And that's it. And bring that right foot down. Now bend the knees, come to a seated position again, reach the arms out with the palms facing up, then bend both elbows, touch the top of the shoulders with your fingertips, and then straighten the arms. This is the full range of motion that you get out of your elbow joints, and again, and then straighten. You can flip the palms so they face down now, make a very gentle fist, and then rotate the wrists around one direction a few times and then back the other way and then reach both hands out and just move your fingers around just creating some movement in all those little joints in the fingers and that's it bring the hands down roll over your knees so from table pose mm -hmm. rise up to kneeling now I'm gonna turn and face you you stay where you are facing the front of the mat and make sure that your hips are over your knees and your shoulders are right over your hips and the knees maybe just a little bit wider than hip width. Reach the arms up and overhead, stretch up and then bring the arms out to a T. Now take a twist to the left and then back to center and to the right and to the left and to the right. Awareness now to the plane of the shoulders and see if you can bring your shoulders so they're about 90 degrees to the hips and then just keep rotating from side to side. We've moved now into the dynamic stretching portion of our practice and what we're doing is starting to stretch out in a dynamic way the muscles of the torso and the shoulders and the hips maybe the legs to a little bit of a little extent and then back to center, reach the arms high, drop the right hand down. Now we're going to stretch sideways, up and over, and then bring the left hand down, reach the right hand up, and reach it up and over. And right hand down, left hand reaches, stretch now on the left side of the body, but just for a moment and then back up. We're almost bouncing out of the stretch. Keep pressing both knees into the mat so weight stays evenly distributed on the knees. And a couple more times on each side. Keep drawing your navel in and keep your chin level so that you're not arching the low back too much. And let's say one more time. I know that was more than once. And then back to center. Now bring the hands to the knees. Bring your chin to your chest. Round your spine. Bend the knees a little bit. And then rise back up. Reach up and back and look up and exhaling down. Now we're rounding the spine forward and back. We're going to do this about seven times up and back at your own pace. Keep the core engaged and just feel the stretch at the extension of the movement and then down rounding the spine about three more times and two more 
and one more. And then rise back to kneeling. And from kneeling, bring your hands forward so the palms touch. The arms are straight. And now we're going to stretch the uh, chest and the uh, space between the shoulder blades. So bring the hands back behind you. Touch the fingertips behind you if you can. And then bring the hands forward. Feel the stretch between the shoulder blades. And back. Feel the stretch in the chest. And forward. And back. And forward. About four more times. Back. And forward. And back and forward. Keep it going one more. And forward and then bring your hands to heart center. Let your eyes close down for a moment. Just breathe. And one more. Now interlace your fingers. Bring your hands to the back of your head. Reach the elbows apart from one another and draw your navel in. Try and pull your tailbone down towards your knees, and then take a bend to the uh, right, and then back to center and to the left. Pull that left elbow down, reach the right elbow high, and back to center. And again, we're going to do this about seven times. And this is another way of stretching out the side body. But these are dynamic stretches. So we're not holding the stretch hardly at all. We're just creating a range of motion. We're helping to warm up the muscles. And a couple more times. And maybe one more on each side. Keep the core engaged, including the abdominal mu muscles. Back to center now. And then reach up high and bring the hands down in front. I'm going to turn and face the front of my mat. Now pick up your right knee and then bring the knee forward and down and back. Now we're going to make some bigger circles with the knees. And here we are stretching. Keep pressing both hands into the mat. Go around a few times one direction and then back the other. You can slow it down a little bit. So you're starting to feel a stretch in the hip on that right side and maybe a little bit in the uh, quadricep muscle on the leg. And then bring that right knee down. Over to the other side, the left knee lifts up, bring it forward and down and back and circle that knee around, making as wide a circle as you're able to, about three times around and then three times the other way. Keep it going. And one more time, and then bring your left knee down. Now leave your right hand where it is, press the right hand into the mat, lift the left hand up, reach it towards the sky, and then bring the left hand under. Don't land, just touch the left hand to the right shoulder, and then lift the left hand back up. We're going to do that about five times. Just starting again to stretch out the spine a little bit as well as the hips maybe three more times and twice more keep it going reach up high you feel that nice stretching the nice dynamic stretch and one more time and reach it up high and then bring that left hand down press the left hand into the mat now reach the right hand up and right hand comes under touch the left shoulder and inhale reach back up and again and reach high. That's the third one. Let's do two more. And reach it high. And one more time. And reach it up high. And then bring that right hand down. Now press the hips back to the heels. And then glide them forward. Drop the hips down and lift the chin. And then press back towards child's pose. Feel the stretch in the back as you do that. And then glide the hips forward and down. Lift the chin. A little stretch in the chest along the front of the body. Press back now to child's pose. And forward again. Let's do that twice more. And one more time. Just keep it going. Gliding through table pose. Dropping the hips. Lifting the chin. And then back to table pose. Now we're going to add into downward facing dog. Lift the hips. Stretch in the back body. Glide forward to plank, 
Now bring the knees to the mat, press back to child's pose, toes are untucked, rise through table pose, glide the hips forward and down, lifting the chin, and then back to table pose. Now tuck your toes, rock forward a little bit, and lift the hips into downward dog. Feel the stretch just for a moment, glide forward to plank, bring the knees down, press back towards child's pose, stretch it out, gliding through table, lifting the chin, pressing the chest forward. Let's do that one more time. Lifting into downward dog with the toes tucked, stretch it out, and glide forward to plank, hips aligned with the shoulders and heels, knees to the mat, back to child's pose, glide the hips forward and down, lift the chin, and then back to table pose. Pause for a moment, take a breath, check in and make sure your hands are still in right below your shoulders. Now step the left foot forward so it ends up between the hands and then press that left knee forward and press the hips down so you start to feel a nice dynamic stretch in the top of the right leg and also in the uh, top of the left leg. Now Straighten the left leg, reach the head forward, nice stretch there. And we're going to do that three times total, pressing the knee forward and then straightening the leg, pressing the left hip back. That's the second one. One more. Pressing that left knee forward and pressing back. And then bend that left knee and step the left knee back so it meets the right knee. Right foot steps forward this time. Now press that right knee forward. Keep your hands on the mat here and start to feel that stretch in the hamstring. And then straighten the leg, reach the head forward, and bend the knee. Lift the chin a little bit and press back. This is the second one on this side. Let's do one more. And pressing back. And then bending the left knee. And then step that left knee back to table pose. And drop the belly, lift your chin, and then exhale to cat pose. Inhale to cow, and exhale to cat. Three more times through, inhaling to cow, and exhaling to cat. Nice dynamic stretching. Inhaling to cow, and exhaling to cat. One more time, inhale to cow, and exhale to cat, and then back to a neutral spine. Back to table pose. Now cross your legs and come to a seat and then straighten both legs so the feet are out in front of you. Now bend your left knee, bring the sole of the left foot to the inside of the right thigh and then reach the arms high, press down on both sitting bones, hinge at the hips and fold forward over that extended right leg and then bounce right back up. Bring the arms out to a T, and then twist your left. Left hand comes down. Lift the hips as you reach with the right hand. Let your head drop down, and that's it. Again, it's a dynamic stretch, so we don't hold it. Bring your tailbone down. Square the shoulders, the extended right leg. Hinge at the hips and fold forward, and inhale, rise back up. Arms to a T, take a twist to the left. Second time, pressing that left knee down. Press into the right foot. Reach with the right hand. Nice stretch in the belly back to center, reach the arms high, and exhale, fold forward. Let's do it one more time on this side, arms to a T, twist to the left, lift the hips, reach with the right hand, stretch it out, and then back to center, tailbone comes down, reach the arms high, and exhale, fold forward, inhale, and rise back up. Bring the hands down, and let's go to the other side. So straighten your left leg. Bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. Reach the arms high. Check in with your shoulders. Make sure the shoulders are square to that extended left leg. Now hinge at the hips. Fold forward. Feel the stretch in the hamstring. Inhale and rise. Arms come out to a T. Take your twist to the right. Right hand plants. Lift the hips. Reach with the left hand. Press into that left foot. And then exhale and bring it down. Square the shoulders to the extended left leg, hinge at the hips, and fold forward. Inhale, bounce right back up, arms to a T, twist to the left, left hand down, reach with the right hand, press the hips a little higher, and bring it down. Now square the shoulders, the extended left leg, hinge at the hips, and fold forward. Inhale and rise, arms to a T, 
Let's take a twist, right hand down, reaching with the left hand, and bring it down. We're coming close now to the end of our dynamic stretch. Hinge at the hips, fold forward. Inhale, rise back up, and then release the hands. Bring the right leg out. Let's do one more um, pose for our dynamic stretching. Lay down on your back, and let's find happy baby pose, and then straighten the left leg, press the left heel away, and then bend that left knee. Back to happy baby pose. Now straighten the right leg, and then bend the right knee. And left, and right, and left, and right. One more time. Left, and right, and back to happy baby pose. Stretch it out. Now straighten both legs, and bend, and straighten both legs, and bend the knees. One more time. We're doing everything in threes, it seems like. Straighten the legs, and then bend the knees. Mm -hmm. Now rock forward and back a little bit, and eventually rock yourself into our first strength pose, boat pose. Palms face up. Lengthen the spine here, so reach your chest away from your pubic bone and breathe. Feel where the muscular engagement is occurring in your body. Probably the abdominal muscles. I'm shaking a little bit. Tells me my body's working hard. Breathe. Now reach the arms high, interlace the fingers, point the index fingers, stretch through the toes, and then bend the knees. Rock forward and back a couple of times until you create enough momentum to come to a standing forward fold. Once you're there, take opposite elbows and then slowly with the knees just slightly bent, rise all the way up, reach the elbows high, and then bend the knees and come halfway down. Keep reaching the elbows forward, the tailbone pressing back. Inhale, rise back up and down. This is building core strength again. Engage the abdominal muscles as you come down and up and down and up. You can straighten the legs a little bit if you like. That'll make the pose more energetic. And a couple more times. Now finish with the elbows reaching high, then release opposite elbows and come into chair pose. Reaching the arms high, pull the tailbone down towards the heels, maybe bend the knees a little bit more. Start to feel engagement in the quadricep muscles. They start to shine a little bit, a little bit of sparkling in the quadriceps. When you're ready, bring your hands to heart center, pressing your palms together, then maybe bend the knees a little bit more. Then we're going to take a chair twist, left elbow to right knee, right elbow reaches high. Breathe. Back to center, and to the other side, right elbow to left knee. Left elbow reaching high. Couple more breaths. And back to center. Back to chair, reach the arms high. Whoa, the legs are really starting to work. And now straighten the legs, look up, and exhale the hands to heart center. Take a breath. And one more. Now leave your right foot forward. Step the left foot back into a high crescent lunge, reaching the arms up and overhead. Press the whole right foot into the mat and bend your right knee if you can, even a little bit more. Chin is level, so look straight forward. A couple more breaths. And one more. I'm going to flip to the other side of the mat. You stay where you are. Now bring your arms out to a T. Then straighten the right leg, pivot on the right heel, and find a wide-legged stance facing the uh, right side of your mat. Reach the arms high. Leave the biceps on either side of the ears, hinge at the hips, and come down halfway. Press into the pinky toes. On an inhale, slowly rise back up, nice and slow, so there's lots of engagement in the core. Do that a second time. Keep reaching through the fingertips. 
and inhale and rise and one more time reach through the fingertips come down halfway and then rise all the way back up arms come out to a T now come halfway down right hand comes down reach the left hand high and left hand down and right hand reaches and right hand down left hand high and left hand down right hand reaches that's the last one bring the right hand down bring the arms out to a T press into the pinky toes keep your spine long as you come up take a deep breath <sighs> bring the arms out to a T then pivot on the left heel, bend the left knee, cartwheel the hands down on either side of the left foot, come up onto the ball of the right foot, step the left foot back to plank pose. Now three breaths in plank. Breathe in deeply and breathe out completely. Again, breathe in deeply and out completely. One more time, deep breath in. Now bring the knees to the mat, chest and chin follow, inchworm your way into cobra pose and then exhale and release all the way down. Now press to plank and lift the hips. Downward facing dog. On an inhale, left leg rises, step it forward so it ends up between the hands and scoot that left foot over a little bit and rise into a high crescent lunge. Coming into high crescent lunge on our second side, left knee bends, reach the arms up, start to feel that engagement that strength building in that left thigh. One more breath. Bring the arms out to a T. Now bring that left heel down, pivot on the right heel, reach the arms up and overhead. We're in wide-legged stance. Bring the arms, bring the hands to heart center and breathe. Now heel toe the feet together a bit, or maybe just walk the feet together, and then pivot on the heels so the toes come out, bend the knees, and let your tailbone drop down. You can keep the palms together if you like, and then straighten the legs, reach up and out into star pose, and do it a second time. Bend the knees, come down a little lower this time. One more breath, and star pose, and one more time, come down. One more breath. I keep saying that. And star pose. Now bring the arms out to a T. Bend the left knee. And cartwheel the hands down on either side of the left foot. Come up onto the ball of that right foot. And then step the left foot back to plank pose. Three breaths now in plank. Breathe in. And out. And in. And out. Notice how engaged all the muscles are in the body, the shoulders, the core, and the legs, even the hands and the feet. When you're ready, just lift your hips into downward facing dog, and then slowly begin to walk your feet forward towards your hands. Once you're at the front of the mat with your feet between your hands, let your head drop down, and then bring your chin to your chest and round your spine, drawing your navel in as you rise. Reach up high and hands come to heart center. Let your eyes close down and breathe. You release your hands down. Leave the right foot where it is and step your left foot back about a three-quarter step and then rise up into warrior one pose, bending the right knee. Try and press down on the pinky toe of the left foot and square your shoulders to the um, front of your mat. Maybe bend that right knee just a little bit more and then release your right hand. Bring the back of the right hand to the sacrum. Reach up through the left hand a little bit more and then re-bend your right knee if you straighten it a little bit the way I did. Now hinge at the hips and fold forward. Come down halfway and then press into the whole right foot and rise. Nice slow movement. You can come all the way down for the second one if you want and touch the fingertips to your mat and then inhale and rise back up. And third time, reaching the fingertips forward, maybe bringing that hand down, and then rising all the way back up. Now release the right hand, bring both hands back up and overhead, and re-bend the right knee. Bring the hands to heart center. Bring the weight into the front of the right foot, and step the left foot forward. 
Now heel toe the feet out so that the toes overhang the edges of the mat and maybe come down to a squat with the elbows on the inside of the knees. And from here if you want to, for a little strength building in the arm as well as the back, bring your hands down to the mat and come into crow pose if you like, lifting the feet up off the mat and reaching the toes up towards the sky. A couple more breaths if you want in crow. And then come back down, back to our yoga squat. Now press the hands into the mat and lift your hips. You heel toe the feet back so they're about hip width apart and parallel, arms to a T. Bend the knees just a little bit and rise slowly as the core engages. You feel that in the glutes as well. Reach up high. Keep the arms reaching up and overhead. Now left foot stays forward, right foot steps back into warrior one pose. Left knee bends. Reach up a little bit more. Now start to feel that in the quadricep on the left leg. Reach up even higher. Pull your right hip forward a little bit more. Left hip back. Now bring the left hand down behind you. Bring the back of the left hand to the sacrum. Press into the sacrum as you reach up through the right hand. Now hinge at the hips. Reach with the right hand. Maybe bring the fingertips all the way down to the mat if you want. And then inhale and rise back up. And a second time, reaching forward and rising back up. And one more time, reaching forward and rising all the way back up. Then release the hands, reach them high, back to warrior one, square your hips to the front of your mat, bring your hands to heart center, and bring the weight in the left foot, step the right foot forward. Now the toes overhang the edges of the mat, bend the knees and come down to our yoga squat. You can stay here if you want, or if you feel like moving into crow pose again, feel free to do that. Just breathe. Those in crow, two more breaths. And return your feet to the mat if you're in crow pose. And then bring your hands to the mat and lift your hips. Bring the feet back so they're about hip width apart. Let your head drop down. Arms come out to a T and now rise slowly. Come all the way up. Reach up high and exhale the hands to heart center. Now hinge at the hips and fold forward. Come to a half lift with the hands on the mat. Then as you exhale, let your head drop down and step the right foot back. Leave the left foot forward. Bend that left knee just a little bit more. So we've come into runner's lunge. Leave your right hand on the mat. Reach your left hand high into a lunge twist and a left hand down. Right hand reaches into a revolt lunge twist. Stretch up. Now spin the right heel to the mat. Now straighten your left leg. Come into triangle pose. Now keep weight in that back foot and slowly rise and then bend the right knee, or left knee rather, into warrior two. Our first warrior two with the gaze forward over the extended left hand. Now breathe, maybe bend that left knee just a little bit more, pressing the pubic bone down, creating more strength in that left quadricep leg, or in that left quadricep muscle. Now straighten the left leg, reach up and back, reverse triangle, arms now come out to a T. Reach the left hand forward and drop it down. Trikonasana, second time on this side. Reach up high. Keep both legs straight, rise. Lots of core strength to do that. Then bend the left knee, warrior two. Now cartwheel the hands down on either side of the right foot, or left foot rather, come up onto the ball of the right foot. Step the left foot back to plank pose. Take a breath. <sighs> Roll over onto the uh, pinky toe of that left foot. Reach the right hand forward into a side plank. You can pick the right foot up if you want to. I'm just going to leave mine on the mat. And then bring the uh, right hand down back to plank pose. Over to the other side. Reach the left hand up, and then reach the left hand forward with the palm facing down. Again, you can pick the left leg up if you want to, and breathe. 
Good. Bring the left hand down. Back to plank pose. Take a breath. Now lift your hips. Downward facing dog. On an inhale, reach your right leg up and then step it forward so it ends up between the hands. Reach the left hand down. Reach the right hand high into a lunge twist. I'm going to move to the other side of the mat. You stay where you are. Now bring the right hand down. Reach the left hand up into a revolt lunge twist. Reach up high through that left hand. Now spin your left heel to the mat. Anchor into the pinky toe of the left foot and then straighten the right leg. Now keep the, the uh, core engaged as you rise all the way back up. Now bend the right knee, warrior two. Second side, first time warrior two on this side. Now straighten the right leg, left hand comes down, reach up and back into a reverse triangle pose. Now the arms come out to a T, press into the left foot, reach the right hand forward, and then let it slowly come down into triangle pose. Second time on this side. So we've done two triangle poses on each side. Keep both legs straight, core engages deeply as you rise, and then bend the right knee. Back to warrior two. Take a breath. Settle into the pose. Good. Now cartwheel your hands down on either side of that right foot. Come up onto the ball of the left foot. And then step the right foot back to plank pose. Now let your hips drop down. Keep your toes tucked. And then lift your hips into downward dog. Do that again. Let the hips drop down. Look up and lift the hips. Downward dog. We're going to do that a total of five times. This is the third one. Lift the hips, and twice more, dropping down, and lifting the hips, and one more time, dropping down, and lifting the hips into downward facing dog. Now bend your knees, take a hop, so the feet end up between the hands. I was hopping uphill a little bit, arms out to a T and rise, reach up high. Exhale the hands to heart center, and let your eyes close down, breathe. If you're not already at the front of your mat, make your way there now. Let's do a uh, second chair pose. Bending the knees, letting the uh, hips drop down. You can keep your hands at heart center if you like. And pull your tailbone down towards your heels. Now straighten the legs and reach up high. We're going to move now into the fourth phase of our practice, which is static stretching. So we're going to hold these stretches a while. We're going to start with the tricep muscles. So bend your left elbow, bring your left hand down to the middle of the back, and bring your right hand to the left elbow, and then pull. Feet about hip width apart works really nicely here. And pull that elbow over to the uh, right. You feel that stretch in the... Uh, tricep on the back of that left arm. Stretch it out even more. And then release it and go over to the other side. And bending the right elbow this time, that right hand is reaching down the middle of the back. Now get a hold of the elbow with the left hand <clears throat> and then pull. And the more you pull, the deeper the stretch. May you even feel that right armpit kind of lifting up a little bit. The right shoulder lifts a little bit as you pull. Try not to tuck your chin. So keep the chin nice and level and stretch. And that's it. Let it go. Mm. Now we're going to stretch the forearms. So bend the, or actually keep your left arm straight, but bend the hand back so that the palm is facing forward and then bring the other hand and pull. And as you do that, you're going to feel a big stretch on the back of the uh, lower part of the arm. Mm. Keep pushing the heel of the hand away. Deepen that sensation. Just a couple more breaths. And let it go. Go over to the other side. So same thing except on the other side. Push your, the heel of that right hand away from you. And pull the palm of the hand towards you. 
as you do that, you're probably going to feel a stretch here in the forearm. And that's it. Let it go. Now standing at the front of your mat, bend your knees a little bit, take opposite elbows, and then press the elbows down towards the big toes. Let your elbows, your shoulders, and your head get really heavy. We're going to stay here about seven breaths. Want to see if you can bring the weight into the front of the feet a little bit more so that you almost feel like you're beginning to tip forward. Now please pay careful attention to where you feel the stretch in the hamstrings. And what I'd like you to begin to feel, if you can, and I'll give you some adjustments in a minute, is the stretch right in the middle of the hamstring, so halfway between the knee and your sitting bones. If you feel that stretch in the back of the knees or up in the sitting bones, it means that you're stretching the attachment points for those muscles. You're stretching the tendons. And if that's the case, bend your knees a little bit. And you can adjust the bend of the knees until you feel that stretch coming right into the middle of the hamstring. So you'll know you're actually stretching the muscle and not just the points where the muscle attaches to the bone. Let's have one more breath. Now release opposite elbows, chin on chest, rounding the spine as you rise. Then reach the arms up. I'm going to turn to face you. You keep facing the front of the mat. Now eagle arms, wrap the right elbow under the left elbow, bring the palms together, and then lift the elbows up a little bit. And that's going to create a nice stretch in the shoulders. And this again is a nice static stretch, so we're going to hold it for a little while. About five breaths, maybe three more breaths total. One more. And release. And come over to the other side, so right elbow under left elbow. And then palms together if you can, lift the elbows until you feel that nice stretch in the shoulders. And then release. Now bring the hands behind you, interlace your fingers behind your back and press your knuckles down towards your heels. This also stretches the shoulders. It also stretches the chest, the pectoral muscles at the top of the chest. Maybe lift the hands up a little bit if you like, and that'll deepen the stretch. Now bring the feet so they're a little more than hip width apart. Hinge at the hips and fold forward. Let your head drop down. Reach the hands high, reaching the knuckles up towards the sky. Feel that stretch in the back of the legs. Notice if you feel that in the uh, glutes or in the back of the knees. If so, bend the knees a little bit. Maybe reach your knuckles forward a little bit more if you can, deepening the stretch. And that's it. Slowly rise back up. Once you're up, press the knuckles down towards the mat. Feel the shoulder blades coming closer together on the back. And release. Let it go. Bring the feet so that they're about hip width apart, facing the front of the mat. And then bend your knees. Come all the way down. And again, I'm going to turn to face you. You're still facing, you're still facing the front of the mat. And let's find Baddha Konasana, cobbler pose, bringing the soles of the feet together. For this version of cobbler pose, what I'd like for you to do is bring your hands behind your back a little bit with the fingers pointing towards the back of the uh, mat or out to the side. Either way is okay. Press the hands into the mat and then draw your navel in. Bring your shoulder blades together on the back. Now about three more breaths in the pose. Feel that great stretch in the legs, in the hips. I'm feeling that in the hamstrings on the inner part of my thighs as well as the hamstrings on the outer part of the thighs. And let it
let it go. Now cross your legs and then roll over the knees into table pose. And I'm going to walk back a little bit on my mat. Now puppy dog pose. Walk the hands forward about as far as you can, maybe a little farther even. And then my mic's getting in the way. <laughs> and then drop your chin down. Your hips are still over your heels. And see if you can bring your chin to the mat. It's going to create a deep back bend. We're going to stay here seven breaths. So we'll give you a little bit of time to move into the pose more deeply. Press your chest down towards the mat as well. So you're surrendering into the back bend. Four more breaths. And three more. Think about reaching your tailbone away from your knees. One more breath. That's it. Now slowly come out of the pose. And back to table pose. Then step your right foot forward between your hands. Press into the right foot and reach the arms up into a low crescent lunge. Now press the right knee forward. You can bring the hands down to the knee here if you like. Bring one hand on top of the other and press that right knee forward, letting your hips drop forward and down. And a few more breaths. Really enjoying that deep, deep stretching sensation in the hip flexor muscles on that left leg, and the hamstrings and the quadricep muscles on the right leg. I guess not so much the hamstrings, more the hip and the top of that right leg. And let it go. Now bring the hands down, fingertips actually to the mat. Straighten your right leg and press that right hip back. Reach your head forward. Pull the right hip back a little bit more till you feel a nice deep stretch in the back of the right leg. And then bend the right knee. Come all the way back up. Press the right knee forward. And arms come out to a T. Take a twist to the right. Left elbow to right knee. Right elbow reaching high. Spine stays long. And keep your chin in a nice neutral position. Couple more breaths. Keep pressing that right foot into the mat. Now let's release from the pose, reaching the right hand back, left hand reaching forward, back to center. Now reach up and bring the hands down. Now step the right knee back and left knee step, or left foot rather, steps forward and rise to a low crescent lunge on our second side. Press that left knee forward, reach up through the right hand, actually through both hands. Then you can bring the hands to the knee and press that left knee forward, deepening the sensation, at least it does for me, in the hip flexor muscles right here at the top of the right leg. That feels so good I could stay here for a long time. Now bring the hands down, come up on fingertips, straighten that left leg, and stretch out the back of that left leg. Press the left hip back a little, pull the right hip forward, reach your head forward. And then bend the left knee. Reach all the way back up and then bring the arms out to a T. Take a twist to your left and bring the palms together into a prayer twist. Again, keep your chin in a nice neutral position on this side, just as you did on the other. And let it go back to center. Now bring the hands down and then step the left knee back. Tuck the toes and lift your hips into downward facing dog. Stretch it out, pressing the heels down towards the mat and press your hands into the mat. We're going to stay here five breaths. And three more. 
Reach the tailbone away from the hand, so you're lengthening the spine. This stretches the muscles in the back, as well as the back of the legs, including down into the calf muscles. One more breath. And that's it. Come down to plank, and then knees to the mat. Cross the ankles behind you, and come to a seat. Now bend the left knee, bring the sole of the left foot to the outside of the right thigh. I'm facing the wrong way. And then bring your left hand down behind you. This is Marichyasana. And press that right heel away. Now breathe in deeply. And you can hold the breath in for a couple of counts if you like. And then as you exhale, allow yourself to twist more deeply. Explore that another breath or two. And one more. Good, let it go. Over to the other side. So straighten the uh, left leg, sole the right foot to the outside of the left thigh. Hug that left knee in, or the right knee rather, in. Bring the right hand down behind you and twist and look over your right shoulder. Press through the left heel. Breathe in deeply. Remember, very little weight on that right hand. The weight is carried by the core. Breathe in. Hold the breath in a couple of counts. And then as you exhale, allow yourself to move more deeply into the twist. It's a static stretch. So we'll hold it for a while, probably three more breaths. Each time you breathe in, hold the breath a few counts. And then as you exhale, allow yourself to move more deeply into the twist. One more. That's great. Let it go. Back to center. Just straighten the legs. Now bend the knees and roll down to your back. Once you're on your back with your head at the back of the mat, walk the feet back towards your uh, glutes and press the feet into the mat and lift your hips into a bridge pose. You can interlace your fingers behind your back if you like. And find five breaths in your bridge pose. And a couple more. And let it go. Bring the tailbone down. Mm -hmm. Keep your head on the mat, but hug your knees into your chest. Ooh. And now if you want, bring your forehead towards your knees, rounding your spine. And now we're ending the fourth phase of our practice, static stretching, bringing the head down to the mat. And you know what comes next, Shavasana. Straighten your legs, flip your palms so they face up. You can bring your arms out if you have space so that you feel a little bit more expansive in your body, like you can take up more room. Now begin to notice your breath. Let your breath start to soften. Become aware of the muscles in your body how they're feeling at this moment. Maybe take a quick mental scan of the whole body from the top of the head through the face and the neck and the shoulders and the chest and the back, the arms and the hands, the hips and the legs, and the ankles and the toes. And on that journey, just notice all the muscles in your body. Observe how they feel.
And if you notice any residual tension, that is any muscles that remain flexed in Shavasana, see if you can let them go. Let go of that tension, if there's any there for you. It's nice to do that on an exhale, letting your exhale help you release any tension, any residual tension that remains. Remember your body is fully supported in this pose. You don't need to hold it up at all. You can just let your whole body rest. Feel that deep, deep surrender. Feel the softness. Feel your muscles both strengthened and relaxed all at the same time. And when you feel ready, reach your arms up and overhead with the back of the hands resting on the floor behind you. And point your toes. Make an effort to lengthen your body. Maybe you can make it another inch or two longer. Now once you feel like you've lengthened the body as much as you can, then draw a deep breath in and fill the whole length of the body with breath. Keep, keep drawing the breath in. And now, big exhale, let it all go. <sighs> Let's do that one more time. A deep breath in, filling the body with breath from the fingertips to the toes. Keep breathing in, and now blow it all out. Let it go. <sighs> As your eyes remain closed, roll to your side, bend your knees, and cradle your head in your arm. Pause for a moment on your side just to notice what it feels like, just to honor that pose, the transition between Shavasana and sitting. When you're ready, slowly bring yourself to a seat. And once you're seated, join me in bringing your hands to heart center. I offer you now loving kindness. May you be happy, well, and safe. May you be peaceful, and may you be at ease. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.